Hello there, and welcome to a dev story. Lately, I've been covering some core concepts in computer science fundamentals, including other structures or time complexity. And today we'll be covering sorting algorithms. Sorting algorithms is one of the most important topics in computer science, and they are also often asked during the technical interviews. So there are several, uh, several sorting algorithms. Probably your programming language already implements some optimized version of it, or you have a library that already does it. But it's still a good exercise to, to learn as many as you can, and that will give you more prepared to dealing with the algorithms in, in general, but also specifically into the technical interview. From all the sorting algorithms that there exist, there are usually two that are most commonly used, let's say, or more commonly discussed uh, algorithm, and these are the merge sort and quick sort. And I will try to give you a quick overview of these two algorithms uh, in, in different videos. In this video, I will be covering quicksort. So the way that quicksort works basically is if we have an unsorted list, we select what is called a pivot. We, you, you select a number in, in the list and then move all the elements that are lower than this number to the left and all the elements that are larger than this number to the right. There are different strategies or heuristics to pick uh, the pivot but we can take a simple one like picking up the last element. So let's say we pick up five and then that will be our pivot. So what we would do is we put five here, traverse the whole list and all the elements that are lower than five will be moved to the left and the elements that are larger than five will be moved to the right. So for example, four, we, we kept on the left, one, the same, seven moves to the right, three, six goes to the right, eight, and then two and we can finish with five. Then we do the same thing in both sides. So on the left, right, left hand side, we will pick up two. And two then will be in the middle of it. And we will move four to the right, one to the left, three to the right. And this side we do the same. We keep doing this uh, for all the steps, right? So we end up with the sorted list. On each step, if you see, we are doing the same thing like other algorithms, like we are dividing and conquer. We select the pivot and then we divide the list uh, between two. So this will have a number of log n levels where we will be doing the splitting and solving on each step. Like in this case, for example, we'll be divided by two. So we have two problems of size n uh, divided by two. And on each level, we will have less and less number of elements. So the size of the problem decreases and we will get log n number of problems. Since we'll still have to do the comparison between uh, the, the elements, this will be like on each step, we will need to solve n. So the time complexity for quicksort on average case would be log n. But if the list is already sorted or you need to sort it in, the, in reverse order, then you can end up having a time complexity of n squared. Uh, if we pick up, if this list is already sorted, or let's say we want to reverse the sorting and uh, we pick this element as the pivot, then if, if it's already sorted, then we will keep it like this. And then we pick the next pivot and do the same thing and keep doing the same thing until we get to the same list at the end, right? Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So basically here, what we are going to do is we have a problem size n, size n minus one, until we get uh, to one, right? Like uh, the last element. So this, instead, instead of being the average case, we will be having n problems and each of the problems of size n. So this will be n square. So in worst case, will be n square. So the average, the average case for quicksort will be uh, big O of n log n, but the worst case scenario would be big O of n squared. Then the space complexity will be constant time since you can do this pivot moving the elements in place. So you, you don't need a new structure to copy the elements like you do, for example, in merge sort. Quick sort is not a stable sort. That means that if you have two elements that are this, have the same value in the list, they will not necessarily be sorted in the same way when the list finishes. Let's say you have a repeated number in two parts of the list. If the first one was at the beginning or at the end of the list, that not necessarily would be uh, shown in the same order at the end of the uh, sorting process. So now you know how quicksort works. 
and all the small details about it, like uh, what is the time complexity, yeah, uh, the, the space complexity, if it's stable or unstable, and these, uh, these details will allow you to compare it against other type of sorting algorithm that you might see. I've put together some links and resources that I found useful for me uh, in the in the description below, so that that, could, that can help you to to learn more about the implementation details of the quicksort algorithm as well as other sorting algorithms. So if you are interested, uh, just uh, look into them. I hope they are useful for you. And of course, if the video has been useful, uh, please like it, share it, and um, subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.